back again and again we're at this section covering Anastasius Anastasius is how a lot of people would pronounce it okay Zeno having died here and what's clever about that is it means who plural and Zeno dies and Anastasius takes his place but there's there's a sort of interregnum very short and so this period from here this is so awesome just I can't get the mouse to from here to there that's the reign of Anastasius but it, it's it's truncating in the middle of Blaponton alright and as I had started to say in the last increment Mark 13 played anaphoric word games with the verb to see alright and he used his pr his word of choice marks was blepo and where John plays on it because he, he like reverses the way Mark did it Mark used blepo primarily and then he used horao a little bit so now John is using horao primarily and using blepo only a little bit is a, a slight difference between the two words horao is really just the function of seeing blepo is to look at like concentrate on pay attention to all right so he's focusing on you're seeing it it's in front of your face but you ain't paying attention and then down here at the death of Justin the first Oh, everybody starts paying attention. See, up here, they're seeing the beast. That was. Here, now, they're paying attention to the beast that was. Now, that's a that's a real uh, subtle difference. But to the Greek reader, it they appreciated subtlety. So they're they're like, oh, we only it was in front of our face, but we saw it. Seeing you don't see, okay. And now we're paying attention to the beast that was. And that is what happens during this period of history. So you see, you got the cleverness of Anastasius, which means reborn and literally resurrect, to tell you the character of the time. The Bible starts that practice in uh, Genesis uh, 5 with the begats. Each one of those names in the begats is telling you the character of the time. Uh, pastor made a big stink about that when he exegeted Genesis 5. He stopped and he went through some of the names and the meaning of the names. The people were named based on the character of the time. Well, that same practice is continuing here. Except that Anastasius was named by his parents. They didn't understand. They weren't doing it in the name of the character of the time. Because everybody in Byzantine Empire pretty much was like, they wouldn't know the Bible if it bit them, even though they had the original language text. Okay, that was where most of the Hebrew manuscripts were, and that was where the original Greek manuscripts were. And yet, for all that, they didn't know what they saw. They saw, but they weren't looking at. They weren't paying attention. So now there's a rebirth of the, uh, of the evil beast, and at, by the end of verse 8, they're going to be paying attention when Justin 1 dies because the beast is going to resurrect and of course you can even tell in English that's the meaning of the passage the beast that was and is not and is going to come up out of the abyss and basically down here during the time of Justinian the beast that was and is not and is coming yeah well that's how Justinian pictured himself that was the, the big propaganda that Justinian sold we're going to resurrect Rome now, Anastasius ends up actually being the resurrection of it, which is not a good thing. It's a bad thing. All right? So, from here to the middle of, and I can't make this thing work because the, the, the word won't let me just do half a syllable, just to right here where that O is in blepo. Okay, bleponton, looking at. 
All right. That's the reign of Anastasius, and he dies right in the middle of it. He dies right in the middle, and that's when Justin the First is going to come to power. So Anastasius is looking at the beast to come. He wants to revive it, and that's what Justin the First wants to do. And he comes into power right there. He's just a pawn. Of course, pawn is the first syllable in poneiros, which means whore. Get the joke. The Greek readers would get it if they knew if they were if anybody was in Constantinople who knew this meter they would be getting that joke and they'd be saying uh oh bad times are coming get out that's what this prophecy is designed to do is tell you what time it is so you know when to get out and where to go all right so now we're gonna go through something of the history of it and it's kind of hard to do that because there's so much history that goes in here starting right about here okay Zeno had died in 491 so you can call this you know 491 492 your typical Roman historian will always do it like that slash the the number okay so it's home plural because one emperor is dying and another emperor is coming to the throne there's a sort of little fight in between before Anastasius comes because at first it's lean it's it's Zeno and um, it wasn't automatic that it would be Anastasius. Zeno's wife marries Anastasius. And that's how come he gets the power. Zeno's wife marries Anastasius because the people of Constantinople wanted that. Now, when you go down here, you can click on each of those links. And this tells you about the sevening that I was mentioning earlier in the video. I, I mapped out where the sevening is so that you can test it yourself in case I made a mistake. Alright. Blepontone is specifically covering 517 to 519 AD. Anastasius dies right in the middle of that. Okay. So God and, and John, or God through John, you know, playing on how Mark did it because Mark did the same thing. And Mark is playing on Ephesians 1, which did it in the middle of Telematos. So Mark does it every time there's a C verb, primarily blepo. And so playing on Mark, very obviously playing on Mark in this partic particular case, John is also using blepo and having the resurrection guy die in the middle of it. Now, the reason why that's important is that this thing here, See where it says dissertation. There's a dissertation I just found yesterday on Anastasius. It was written in 1998. And if you click on this link here, you'll go to it. This is the dissertation itself. I'm in the middle of reading it. I haven't finished reading it yet. But it's by a gal named Fiona Lewis. I think, or no, Cricks. Cri 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 Let me look. This one, this this gal right here, Nix, Fiona Nix. Okay, you can click on that link. Just type in Anastasius one Byzantine, and the third link ought to be the reign of Anastasius the first. She wrote her doctoral thesis on Anastasius, which is really good because it's really hard to find good information on him. Okay, and that doctoral thesis is right here. I downloaded it. And I'm in the middle of its chapter 4, which is talking about the religious policy of Anastasios. It's long. It's good. It's got source material in it. So I just link to it so you can read more and check to see if what I'm telling you is right or not. And, you know, you can check other sources too. So what I'm going to say in this video is obviously going to be very truncated. So you're going to want to, like, look into it more. Because what John is doing is he's explaining what happens between the 490 ending at Christ's birth and the 490 ending at his death. And it's this guy. Okay? At least up to here, to the middle of Bleppo. So, the thing that's really bothering me and, and what I got trouble explaining is that the words, who, not, written, name, each name, individually into 
the book of life from the source of the foundation of the world and this this means the world with people on it so that's not talking that's from Adam's creation forward all right cosmos means uh, civilized civilization it means people it's not just talking about the ground all right and then in the middle of seeing the beast which was he dies the rebirth dies the resurrection dies because anastasis means resurrection anastasius means of the resurrection you know like child of the resurrection really all right so if the words are saying not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world for this whole period the natural question is going to be well does that mean that everybody in Rome both Rome's at this point because because now the the actual war between the Christians has escalated from Gaul all the way west in Gaul to all the way east in Persia because it's going to include wars with Persia over the same thing related to the same thing does that mean that everybody who was fighting is an unbeliever unsaved by the time they die well you know logically you have to say well that can't be true but they're sure acting as if they are if you believe in Christ you're supposed to like want to learn him and if you don't learn him then you're gonna act and think and do just like anybody who's part of cosmos you're gonna just be like all the inhabitants of the earth and the Romans thinking oh well, we're Roman and we count and everybody doesn't and the word hoy here is just a definite article but it, it's used in a way that makes it exclusive the inhabitants of the earth are just the people who live in Rome you don't live in Rome of course what's the definition of Rome you don't live in Rome you're not an inhabitant of the earth you don't count that's why I've always translated it all because they're all the inhabitants who count okay it's like saying the inhabitants in English as if there were no others it's excluding any others we're in the USA America first America first we're the country of the earth you've heard that disgusting thing before haven't you it's the same idea alright so at the end of the 490 for Christ's birth there's a there's a polarization and a extreme arrogance that's religious in quality and it goes on and then by the time the 490 from his death occurs there is it's 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 so bad that it's like peaked we're in the same kind of thing right now the 490 from Christ's birth was our year 2000 was the end of a 490 from Christ's birth I mean you could even go back like I did in the 7b and because there's different ways you value this thing and they're all valid that's the weird thing is that to qualify for time to continue by the time 490 from Christ's birth ends somebody had to mature in doctrine in knowing Bible by the time Christ died which would be 520 AD 490 plus 30 all right somebody had to mature now I'm betting that the, the it's it's like concatenated all right so that if if there wasn't somebody by the end of the 490 of his birth that they got this 30 year window to get there I can't prove that yet it just makes sense to argue it that way all right well the first 490 was Paul he even tells you that in 2 Timothy 4, 7, and 8. So the first 490 was going to happen. Christ, Christ himself, he buys the ability to have time. But he himself did not get his own 490 or 1000. Because that would be unfair. Because he's God-man. So it has to be a believer. Alright? So I'm arguing that, that, you know, for sure it was Paul. We know that from Scripture. 
and I'm arguing that well this 30 year is something like a little window if nobody was mature by 490 for the next 490 that's the kicker Paul bought the first one but by the end of it it's another one that's due is the next 490 going to happen or is the world going to end at 490 and then there's like this little 30 year window so, okay, well, if somebody doesn't do it here by the end of 490 for the next one, not the current, the next one, then you got another 30 years to get there. So by 520, somebody new had to super mature. And I have no idea who that would have been. Somebody new. And then the next 490 after it, therefore, can play. We know it happened because time goes on past 520. And we also know there was an extreme amount of evangelism that went on during that time. So maybe one of the monks, or maybe a charwoman who worked for the monks did it. Or maybe a duke who got a copy of the Bible made for him because maybe he was an invalid and he didn't have anything else he could do but just lay in bed. So he did it. Somebody did it. We'll find out when we're dead who, who these people are because they're the heroes of history. All right? So now, again, we're going to, this whole period then is saying, hi, whose names are not written in the Book of Life from the foundation of the earth are people who um, are, if they're saved or not, well who knows because they sure don't know Bible even though they've got the ones in the original languages. And that's the period characterized by resurrection. So the resurrection of the 490 is a period of internecine war, blood against blood, just as ever since Constantine's sons which everybody stands around and wonders at like John is doing up there and like they're doing here when Rome falls. Western Rome falls. And they're still doing it. And now they're starting to think, oh, we need, we want Rome to come back. We want to go back to the way it was. We want to go back to the way it was. And when a civilization starts looking backwards to its good old days, that's a civilization in decline. And I'll pick up more on that in the next increment because I don't know if this video is going to work.